Good morning, friends. Uh, Pastor Nate Borman here, one of the pastors at my Lebanon. It's uh, camping trip devotion number one. Um, I'm up here at Potawatomi State Park um, with my family this week uh, out, in the, out in the woods of Door County. Um, it's going to be a great day. Um, Johannes is out fishing this morning. Petrus is here riding his bike. It's going to be a great day. We're in Daniel chapter uh, 6 right now. And one of the things I, I think you need to understand as we get into chapter 6 is that this is a brand new kingdom. This is a brand new kingdom. Uh, we've, we've moved on from the kingdom of Babylon, from King Nebuchadnezzar and King Belshazzar, and we are into the kingdom of the Medes and the Persians. Um, the king is Darius. There, there's a lot that's changed overnight. Remember that there was the writing on the wall and, and King Darius was, uh, he came in and, and threw down King Belshazzar. He was killed that night and Darius took over in his place. Um, so it's, it's important to understand that we're in a brand new kingdom. And so there's a lot that's changed. But I, I think there's one thing in, in the opening verses, you see it. There's one thing that hasn't changed and that's Daniel. Um, if you think about this for a second, when you think about a kingdom and a ruler and you're coming into a new place, what are you going to do with the administration? Uh, what are you going to do with the people who are in charge? What are you going to do with the people who you put in positions and places of authority? If you are a new king uh, with a new kingdom and you're trying to displace and totally discredit and remove the old kingdom, you're going to bring in your own people. Um, I think about that with sports teams. If there's a new head coach, he brings in his own coaches, he brings in his own staff. You know, that, that's by and large, that's what they do. Uh, but, but one thing that remains is there's a new king, a, a new kingdom, but Daniel still finds his place at the top of the heap, uh, at the top of the rulership chain. In, uh, now it's not Babylon, now it's the Medes and the Persians. And it, what that means is that Daniel stood out. He stood out among the people of Babylon, not Babylon anymore, it's the Medes and the Persians. He stood out as someone who was capable and qualified to hold a position of authority. And, and he also stood out quite clearly and really quite quickly as a child of the one true king. I want to read to you uh, verses 4 and 5 of chapter 6. Uh, at this, the administrators, so, so the king was going to put Daniel in charge. At this, the ad administrators and the satraps tried to find grounds for charges against Daniel in his conduct of government affairs, but they were unable to do so. They could find no corruption in him because he was trustworthy and neither corrupt nor negligent. So, so what you see is that Daniel was a good guy. He was a good worker. He was a good ruler. And he was, a fa he was faithful to his God. Verse 5, finally these men said, we will never find any basis for charges against this man Daniel unless it has something to do with the law of his God. What they recognized about Daniel, and they, I find this amazing, what they noticed about Daniel right away is that he was a follower of the one true God. He was faithful to his God, and the only way they were going to catch him in doing something wrong is if Daniel was always doing something right. <laughs> you see how that's all messed up? We will never be able to get him doing anything wrong unless he's doing it the right thing by his God. Daniel, uh, this was the title of the devotion, that Daniel was shining bright as a child of the one true king, as a follower of the one true God. Daniel was always doing the right thing. I want you to try something in your own heart today. Do an exercise and maybe even write this down. What would, now there's two questions. What would people say about you at your funeral? If, if, they're, giving a, if they're giving a eulogy for you at your funeral, what will they say? What would they say about you based on the life that you live? Do you, do you shine like Daniel did? Do you stand out as God's child, both in terms of the life you live in this world as someone who's not, and Daniel was said, there was no corruption in him, um, both as a citizen of this country and as a child of the one true God? What would people say about you and what will God say about you? 
I think if we take a moment to, to look at our lives and we take a moment to reflect on what would people say about me? Do I shine like a star? Do I shine out in this world? Uh, Jesus tells us, let your light shine before men that they may see your good deeds. Would people look at my life and say, man, this guy has a great God, man. This person is a follower of the one true God. What would people say? What do people say about you when they look at your life? Do they, do they talk about your God? Uh, do they talk about the God that you have? Do you shine like a star? That's, it's a useful exercise uh, for two reasons. One, because it shows us <laughs> we don't shine like stars. Um, but it also drives us to, to our Savior Jesus who does make us shine like stars. Uh, this, this exercise of what would people say about me, um, about my ministry, about my life at my funeral, um, what would my kids say about me when I'm, when I'm dead, um, is a useful exercise because it, it, it shows us that we don't and it, and it shows us, it drives us to our Savior Christ. Because the truth is, uh, you do shine like stars. Uh, because of the glory of Christ, you do shine like star. There is no guilt. There is no shame. Uh, the devil cannot accuse you of anything. Uh, anything. Um, there, there are no, he can whisper in your ear. He can tell you that you've done all kinds of things wrong. And, he, and on, on the one hand, you have to say that he's right because you did do those things. But on the other hand, you, you have to say that he's wrong because your Savior Christ has totally acquitted you. You, you are not only covered by the glory of Christ, but you are acquitted by your Savior, Jesus. You are not guilty in his sight. So you do shine like stars. You shine like stars before God, and, and people don't necessarily see that in you when they look at you, but your God does. Your God does. So, so perhaps let this be our, our motto, let this be said about us at our funerals, that this one was clothed in the glory of Christ, this one was covered by the blood of the Lamb, this one was acquitted and is acquitted by in the courtroom of God. This is who you are. So, so with that, with God's verdict on your life, with God's glory, with Christ's glory over your shoulders, rise up today, uh, stand up today, and let your light shine before people that they may see what a great and what a powerful God that you have. Uh, the Lord be with all of you today and, and great you, get, grant you a great day. Uh, Steve, uh, we, I, last night I grilled uh, brats. We, we're up here at Potawatomi State Park and, and we whipped out a little baby grill and, and made some brats last night. I, I think we, we've got some other things going on this morning and tonight. Um, it's going to be great. So the Lord be with all of you today. Um, the Lord grant you his peace. You shine like stars in this world. So let the people see, let the, let the world see, let the world see what a God that you have because you are his and you shine with his glory. Uh, the Lord be with you all.